Namaste, sir, respected ma'am. My name is Valentina Infanta, a fifth year student of Mysore School of Architecture. I am here to present my thesis project on the topic Catholic Church Community. This is how I will be taking you through my thesis project. At first, I will give a brief idea about the project. Since my thesis project revolves around church design, the next part of my explanation will be all about introduction to church architecture and evolution of church architecture. Then I will be talking about the different literature and life case studies regarding the topic and then a brief explanation about the spatial requirements followed by site study and analysis, different concepts and ideas and initial zoning. In the later part of the presentation, I will be walking you through the design stage which includes the site planning and the design of the individual blocks. I would like to start on with a quote from the book Sacred Spaces by James Pallister which goes on like, Religious buildings belong not just to the people who worship in them but to the communities they anchor. A church is a place of worship, prayer and reception of sacraments, a place that offers hope and hospitality, a place where we can be forgiven even made new. Although the religious beliefs may differ from individuals, the elements that make church architecture unique are shared universally. The aim of the project is to design a Catholic church community with a modern or contemporary approach for the millennials. And I've tried to achieve this by the following approaches. To have more of a community planning than an individual structure, understanding and designing with millennials in mind, integrating community services and having a contemporary approach. The next set of explanation will be about project justification. If you would ask me why a modern or contemporary approach, it is because many individuals have become uncomfortable or feel un unwelcomed in traditional church structures. It can be due to many reasons like innate formality of the spaces, historical hierarchies attached to them, discomfort with language and interpretation of spirituality, the perceptions of expected behavior, etc. If you have to be relevant to the present crowd, you have to go modern and you have to go simple. The next part is a justification on why a complex or community instead of just a church building. Here is why. The notion of sacred spaces or spiritual connection with God will take on different meaning for every individual. When questioned to people what comes to their mind when they think about a sacred space or what they imagine doing in that space, their ideas vary like for some people attending a mass or liturgy is a sacred space. For others, taking part in religious celebrations like Christmas and Easter is considered sacred. For some people, sitting in a silent place and meditating is considered religious. For others, just being able to witness and appreciate the creation of God, the nature around is considered sacred. And for many, participating in social works and social services for the community is considered religious. Hence, the idea is to create a platform where people are able to explore in their own area of spirituality. The advantages of considering community integration are, it helps in creating opportunities, the resources and infrastructures can be shared, it increases and broadens exposure, the services can benefit the communities around. The next part of my project study talks about designing worship spaces for millennials. Millennials are the people belonging to the generation Y and generation X, that is people who are born between 1981 to the present day. Millennials today are especially curious about uh, the way a physical space interacts with their own life and in this case how a church helps them to find their place. The following are a few aspects that are to be considered while designing religious spaces for millennials. First is visual clarity, second is free of distraction, third is indulging nature and fourth is having a space which is more than just a church. A certain research and survey was done by a group called Bana on designing worship spaces for millennials. The research was a two-part approach and considered a group of millennials from different backgrounds. Part one of the research was visual pooling where they had to select an image from four images based on which was most appealing to them. The next set of the survey was a presentation of two contrasting terms to describe a space or experience. The survey participants were asked to choose the ones which they thought that was most relevant to an ideal church. Therefore, the results from these surveys are taken into consideration throughout the design process of my project. This slide talks about the introduction to church architecture. A few features that led to the development of church buildings are atrium, bima and mausoleum. The Latin and Greek cross. Most cathedrals and great churches have the Latin cross which has a long nave crossed by a transept. The Greek cross is a square plan with the nave, channel and transept arms are of equal length. 
Next are the architectural features which are common in cathedrals and churches. The axis usually has the main entrance towards the west and the altar towards the east. Vertical emphasis is a prominent external feature that raises upwards in all churches like domes and towers. Facade is the most ornate part of the church structure. The nave is the path leading from the main entrance to the altar and the aisles are small walkways on either sides of the church seating. Crossing is a junction where transept intercepts with the nave. The transept is the arm of the church. The, our altar holds the table and seating for the priest. It is the most sacred part of the church. Choir stalls and organs are places where the choir sits and choir services are held. Front and lectern are places for the reading of the Bible. The rose windows and stained glass is a major part of the church building which illustrates the life of Christ. Let's move on to the literature case studies. This sheet talks about two case studies. The San Jose Maria Church in Mexico built in the year 2008 within an urban context which later became a city landmark. The concept is the relationship between architecture and light forming a cross of light facing the north side. My take from this design for my thesis project was the brilliant use of materials, especially the use of zinc panels for the exterior to reflect the moment of sun and also the restricted entry of light into the building to form desired patterns. The next study is on the Cathedral of Brasilia by Oscar Neymar, which was also become an iconic symbol of Brasilia. The concept of the building is to create a sense of purity and balance throughout the building. The building also resembles to a crown of thrones and also looks like two hands joined in prayer. My take from this design is how a form-based design can talk or tell a story. The massive use of stained glass to give the feel of a church building is appreciated and also the use of new construction technologies and methods to achieve the same. I would like to reflect on similar lines for my project. Next, let's move on to the live case study which is done on St. Michael's Cathedral, Coimbatore, Tamil Nadu. It is the parish church and consists of the house of the bishop. My take from this study is the understanding of different spaces within the church complex like parish hall, high school, shrines, prayer hall, seminary, guest rooms, bishop house, retreat centers, etc. The space of interest was the CMSS which is a block dedicated for social service and was of open participation to all. It also consisted of a media and a legal office. I have used the literature case studies to understand the concepts and forms of different modern churches and the life case studies to understand the functionality and spaces in different church complexes. Let's move on to the site study and analysis. I have chosen my site in Kodikanal. Kodikanal is a city in the state of Tamil Nadu. It is in the district of Tindakal and it is 2000 meters above the sea level. The site lies in the primary residential land zone. According to the bylaws of Kodekanel, I have mentioned a list of parameters that are to be considered while designing on this zone. Site Justification Why Kodekanel? The place has a Catholic background since the hill station was founded by the British Christian missionary. The percentage of Christian population is more comparatively. Because it is an experimental project, a place known for tourism may aid in exposure. Because of the serenity of the place, which is away from all traffic and noise. Why this site in Kodekanil? As the site is in the residential zone, the site can be easily accessed by families. The educational institutions around the site can also aid in bringing in the student crowd. The site lies along the cycle track along the lake for tourist approach. The site is on a higher slope giving a natural hierarchy of length for the structure. Climate data. Kodekanil has a subtropical highland climate. The temperature is cool throughout the year due to the high elevation of the city. Based on the study of temperature, the sunlight can be used as an advantage considering the cold climate and due to this, the flow of wind should be reduced. This is to be considered while designing. The site is about 5.8 acres and it is a slope site. There are 7 contours crossing the site each of 2.5 meter drop. The site slopes downwards from the dense forest on the south side towards the Kodikana lake on the north side. The site provides panoramic views of breathtaking landscape and mountains. The image of surrounding landscape are shown with marked viewpoints from the site with by the red dots. Due to the site being sloped, a study of ridges and valleys is done in order to find the natural water catchment areas which is represented by blue colors on the site. The placement of blocks should be avoided in these areas. The site is surrounded by roads on all the three sides and the red dot lines show the existing site accesses. The site is surrounded by residential and commercial buildings, most of it being residential buildings. The site is surrounded by thick landscape on the south and southeast sides. The wind direction is mostly from the west, northeast and northwest side. 
to the concepts and initial ideas. The conceptual idea for the church form was Jesus in meditation. It is a very rare image of Jesus that I found which gives a whole new idea on Christian spiritualities. I have shown the different stages of development of the form. The form itself being an abstract of meditation posture changes the perspective of looking at a church. The church is not only a place where people come together to celebrate a mass but also a place where a person can discover his inner peace. Moving forward to the detailing of the form, I wanted the structure to have a curved wall to depict the seating posture. Strips of metals are placed at the top of the structure in such a way that it looks like a crown is placed on the head. The front facade has two huge semicircular stained glass pieces on either side of the main door to emphasize the entrance. Strips of clear glass are provided on the roof structure to get in natural light and to form interesting patterns. Considering the aerial view, I wanted the structure to sit in between petal shaped pathways which can act like ramps for access to and from the church. For the interior, I wanted to show the representation of the 12 apostles beside the table of the altar like the scene of the Last Supper. The altar will have stained glass cross pattern. The interior roof structure will be a combination of wooden panels and clear glass. Finally, the structure is a combination of Indian and contemporary. The concept of meditation having an Indian background with a contemporary form and modern material. For the open gathering, the idea was to have the form of a dove in flight. In Christianity, the dove is considered as a symbol of Holy Spirit. This form represents the presence of the Holy Spirit and also gives a feeling of protectiveness, that is, if the seatings are provided under the wings of the Holy Spirit. The idea for the meditation room, his nature is God. I wanted to design a space which is simple and free from all dis distractions and the main focus being the freestanding cross in midst of the nature natural landscape. The space will have a level drop from the ground level. It is a simple concrete triangular structure with clear glass walls at the very end to get in light and to draw attention to the cross. The space is used for meditation and silent prayer. Let's move on to the initial zoning. The first image shows zoning based on religious function. The brown patches shows the three grottos. The purple patches shows the area of community community service like education for kids, social service, youth classes, etc. The red patch shows the church structure for celebration of mass. The green patch shows the open gathering for religious celebration and retreats. The blue patch shows the meditation space and the yellow patch shows the parish hall for celebrations and functions. The second image shows zoning based on the level of privacy with parish hall being the most open to public and the church residence being the least open to public. The third image shows zoning based on circulation. The green lines show the public circulation and the purple lines show the private circulation. Since the site is surrounded by roads on all the three sides, the service road is provided only on the east side. The church block is placed at the center of the site surrounded by the other blocks. The main entrance is provided from the west side. The admin block is placed right at the entrance. The parking is also provided on the lower slope which is closer to the entrance. The parish hall is provided next to the parking so there is easy movement in and out of the hall. The church residence is provided behind the church for privacy purpose and also the church structure can block the west winds from entering into the residence. The open gathering is provided on the highest slope due to its form and function. The meditation space is provided on the east side little away from the other blocks. A separate entrance is provided for the preschool and daycare in such a way that it is a part of the church complex but at the same time the functions and accesses are not disturbed by the other users. Let's move on to the site plan and site sections. The main entrance is provided on the west side. There is one pedestrian pathway which leads to the church and the other one which leads to the admin block. The vehicular access is restricted beyond the parking area. There is provision for four-wheeler parking, two-wheeler parking and cycle parking. There is a drop-off and pick-up area right next to the church entry. The administration block is provided right at the entrance for easy access. The public washroom is provided next to the administration block and the church block. The church residence is provided behind the church. From the church there is a ramp which leads to an open common space from which all the three residential blocks which is the convent, the residence of the priest and the seminary can be accessed. The meditation space is provided at a separate corner of the site with added landscape to achieve the initial idea of the space. The open gathering is provided at the topmost corner of the site with a large open space in front for the crowd to spill out. The preschool and daycare are arranged around the playground with a separate entry and exit. There are three grottos or shrines provided on the site. Grotto 1, Grotto 2 and Grotto 3. Grotto 1 is at the entrance. Grotto 2 is provided next to the church and Grotto 3 is provided on the highest slope with the mountain as its backdrop. 
When seen in the side section, the church structure stands prominent and grabs focus with the other blocks laid around it. The next level of focus goes to the open gathering. Let's move on with the individual blocks. The first one is the admin block. The admin block is provided right at the entrance of the site. It is, it is designed around an open space. The left wing of the admin block is dedicated for counseling and for classes for changing of religion. It consists of spaces like the lobby, the, which is attached to the library on one side and the counseling room on the other side. The right wing has classrooms for the communities like the computer classes and the tailoring classes. It has other spaces like the staff room with attached washrooms, uh, office for the priest, the main admin office, uh, finance uh, office and a marriage bureau office. It also has a stall and for purchase of religious books and religious items. The public washroom is provided right next to the admin block. In section, the, the block has a sloped roof and the seatings are provided below the tree which also can be seen in the section. The, pat the triangular patterns which are followed uh, in this block are followed in every other block as well. The section BB is cut through the admin block and the washroom and the section CC is cut through the finance department and shows the right wing of the admin block in elevation. Now let's move on to the next space which is the preschool and the daycare. The preschool and the daycare is arranged around the playground and it has a separate entrance and exit. The spaces are, it has a preschool area a daycare area, washroom facilities for the kids and play tents which are indoor play areas for the kids. The preschool area consists of three classrooms, one for pre-KG, LKG and UKG. These three classrooms are interconnected. They have seating area and also storage space for display of the kids work. The daycare area consists of a common indoor play area for the kids, the office room, the pantry area and kitchen the staff room with attached washrooms and it has two rooms the first room is for kids of zero to one years with facilities of uh, beds and sleeping and feeding rooms the second room is for kids from two to three years old with also sleeping facilities and washrooms this uh, this area is the shower and the cleaning area the washrooms are provided separately for uh, the boys and the girls in the section, section AA, you can uh, see the preschool which is which is cut through the preschool showing the uh, different classrooms and also the play tents for the kids. The, uh, the section BP is cut through the play school area and shows the daycare and the washroom in elevation. The preschool and the daycare have slope roofs. The daycare has a big skylight on the roof which in section can be seen how it brings in light into the common area. The section CC shows the preschool in elevation and it is cut through the daycare. The park is provided right in front of the preschool which is being shown in section CC. And the triangular patterns are being followed in this area as well. Next, let's move on to the church residence. The church residence is provided right behind the church block and it has its own parking facilities which can be accessed from the service road. Uh, the ramp behind the church leads to an open common space from which the three residences, which is the convent, the residence of the priest and the seminary can be accessed. All the three uh, residential blocks are accessed from the open common space. The spaces within the convent are, it has a lobby space, a chapel, a dining space which is close to the kitchen and the utility area. The rooms in the convent are provided on either sides of the garden area. They are double sharing, uh, they are double sharing rooms with attached washrooms. Next is the residence of the priest. The spaces include a lobby which is, uh, which is attached to a chapel, the dining area and the pantry and it has two set of rooms with attached washrooms. The one room is for the uh, parish priest and the other room is for the assistant parish priest. Next is the seminary block. The ground floor plan of the seminary block consists of the following spaces. 
a lobby with a staircase which leads to the above floor dining area which has access to the kitchen and utility there is a path which lead which which connects the dining area of the seminary to the dining area of the residence of priests there is a chapel a conference room computer and tv facilities music room with storage classrooms and libraries all these spaces are arranged around a courtyard the first floor plan of the church residence mostly consists of the residence residence areas the left wing consists of residences for the priest who are mostly under the teaching facility teaching faculty they are uh, they are individual rooms with attached washrooms the right wing is residence for the brothers who are learning to become priests these rooms are double sharing rooms with attached washrooms they also have a common chapel which is be which is provided in the first floor plan section aa is cut through the courtyard area of the seminary it shows the double double floored structure and shows the residence of the priest in elevation the section bb cuts through the residence of the priest and shows the seminary and the convent in elevation the seminary is a g plus 1 structure whereas the residence of the priest and the convent are a are single floored structures with sloped roofs Section CC is cut through a part of the convent through the common open space and through the seminary showing the residence of the priest in elevation the convent shows the right wing of the residence with overlooking the garden area the dining area and the lobby the seminary shows two floors with the corridor of the first floor overlooking the courtyard area The next block is the open gathering which is provided at the top corner of the site. It is basically a semi-open structure with temporary seating provided underneath. It has an altar or a stage area for functions and performance. The seatings are provided in three levels and has four set of walkways two on either sides and two in between the seatings. The grotto 3 is provided behind the open gathering which is on the highest corner of the site. It can be accessed by a set of steps which also acts as seatings. I have shown a detailed sketch of the grotto. It consists of three levels. Uh, the third level has the statue of Jesus on the cross with Mother Mary and Mary Magdalene on either sides with a beautiful mountain landscape as the backdrop. Section AA cuts through the open gathering and grotto 3. The open gathering shows a semi-open structure where seatings are provided in three levels leading to the altar or the stage area. The section also shows a step a series of steps leading to the grotto and also the grotto 3 in section. When seen from the front elevation the structure takes the form of a dove in flight which was the initial concept of the open gathering to have the seating below the wings of the dove the head of the dove is represented by a stained glass pattern and there are lightings provided within the inner roof structure it can accommodate seating of for up, for about 550 to 570 people It is basically a cell structure which is made flexible to achieve the desired form. On the right hand side I have shown the construction details of a concrete shell structure and also the different layers that make up the shell structure. Let's move on to the next block which is the meditation space. It is a simple a simple concrete triangular shaped structure with a lean to roof. The structure has a level drop and it is stepped down from the ground level. It has two types of seating. the bench seating which is attached to the wall and the floor seating the concept is nature is god the structure is free from all ornamentation and distraction and the main focus is directed towards the glass wall directed towards the glass wall which overlooks the free standing cross which is in midst of the nature and landscape both the sections show the floor seating which is focus towards the glass wall overlooking the free standing cross in midst of the landscape section bb shows the level drop from the ground level it has a lean to roof which flow which slopes downwards towards the entrance this causes the users to bend in order to access the entrance which automatically shows a sign of reverence like bowing their heads before the lord 
let's move on to the next block which is the parish hall it is used for celebration of functions like marriage reception etc it is a g plus one structure with two halls both having a capacity of about 200 to 220 people in case of large gatherings the ground floor can be used for function and the first floor can be used for dining in case of small gatherings it can be used as two separate halls in the ground floor plan the entrance is accessed by a set of steps on either side of the fountain also a set of ramps on either side of the green patches for the differently abled the floor plan consists of the seating area with the service counters uh, area for the band and the music system an area for outdoor food service uh, with attached uh, hand wash area the um, storage room has access from the outside there is also a resting room which is provided beside the stage with attached washrooms the common washrooms are accessed from the outside there is also a set of staircase which leads to the above floor and there are also two changing rooms with attached washrooms the first floor plan is a repeat of the ground floor plan where the whole, where the seating can be converted into a dining area in case of a large gathering and the changing rooms are replaced by two rooms with attached washrooms aa is cut horizontally through the seating of the parish hall it shows spaces like outdoor service the seating area with the doorway and the outdoor corridor uh, section bb and section cc are cut through the longer dimension of the building section bb shows spaces like the room beside the stage the seating and the dining area the uh, rooms and the uh, changing rooms it also shows the staircase in section and the first floor corridor overlooking the fountain at the entrance. Section CC shows the stage, the seating area and the service, service counters. There is a strip of clear story windows which is provided to get in natural light into the seating area. Last but not the least, let's move on to the church structure. The plan of the church sits in midst of series of petal-like petal -like structures which acts like ramp or pathways to access to and from the church. The ramps are provided on either sides of the green patches. The building has a huge frontage for people to gather before and after the mass. The main entrance is between two semicircular glass patterns. There are two more entrances which are provided on either side of the building with exterior seatings. When when entered into the church, the baptistry is propositioned towards the left side and the confession box is propositioned towards the right hand side. It has a nave which goes from the main entrance towards the altar and two aisles on either side of the seating. The church has a seating capacity of about 470 feet. There is also a separate balcony seating provided for the kids which can hold up to 30, 30 to 35 kids. The choir area is provided beside the altar with choir seatings and platform for the band. The altar consists of the table and the seating, seating of the priest and also extra seating for boys who assist the priest. The statues of the 12 apostles are provided behind the seating. The center part consists of the stained glass, the cross and the chalice. There are two rooms on either sides of the altar. The preparation room where the priest prepares before the mass and the storage room where, uh, where the storage of the holy elements are kept. Both these rooms are accessed from the exterior of the building. There are two grottos around the church building, Grotto 1 and Grotto 2. Grotto 1 is basically a stone, small cave-like structure and holds a statue of Mother Mary, which, is, which can be accessed from inside and outside the site. Grotto 2 is a small step tower-like structure with a statue of Mother Mary holding Jesus on top. Candle stalls are provided all around the structure. Section AA and BB cut horizontally and vertically through the interior of the church. Section AA shows the position of the baptistry, the wall mounted statues and the stained glass windows and also the north entrance. It also shows the strips of clear glass on the roof structure which brings in natural light into the building. Section BB cuts through the seating and shows the choir area, the altar area and the balcony seating in elevation. It also shows the structure of the bell tower in elevation. On the right hand side is the furniture design for the baptistry which is used for the ritual of baptism and the lectern which is the stand for reading the bible. The interior roof structure is cladded with strips of wood and it is flexible and adapts to the curved surface and also complements with the white walls.
This sheet shows the front elevation and the south side elevation of the church. In both the drawings, the crown like structure on the top, the bell tower, the petal shaped pathways and the clear strips of glass on the roof structure are clearly visible. In the front elevation, there are two huge semicircular stained glass windows on either side of the main doorway to emphasize the entrance. On the right hand side is the furniture design of the confession box and the church seating. On the exterior, the roof structure is cladded with zinc panel which generates interesting patterns as the sun moves throughout the day. It, is benef it, is, it has benefits of lightness, durability, flexibility and sound insulation. The next set of slides will show the 3D views of the church building. This image shows the exterior view of the front facade of the church from a bird's eye view. This image shows the front elevation of the church from the perspective of a man walking towards the church. This image shows the interior view from the entrance on the south side. The main entrance, the huge semicircular stained glass windows, the altar space and a part of the balcony is also seen in this image. This image shows the interior view of the church from the altar space. The complete, uh, the complete position of the seatings, the balcony, the statues along with the stained glass windows, the main entrance, the two semicircular stained glass windows and the strips of clear glass on the roof is seen in this image. The light which is cast through the strips of, stain, uh, strips of clear glass on the roof to form patterns on the walls is also seen in this image. This slide shows a series of interior views. The first image shows the position of the balcony seating for the kids, which can be accessed by a flight of staircase from the south side entrance. The second image shows the position of the confession box right behind the semicircular stained glass. The third image shows the choir area beside the stage and the altar, along with the north side entrance. The wall mounted statues and the stained glass windows are clearly visible. The fourth image shows the position of the baptistry which lies opposite to the position of the confession box.